Our next speaker is uh, Susi uh, Naka Sugawa. Uh, he's the CEO of MoonGIF, and today he will give us a talk about let's start let's get started development of API client library. Okay, um, let's welcome Ata Ata uh, Susi. Hello, Asusi. Yeah. Uh, can, can you share your slide? Okay. Great. So, can you see that? Yep, perfect. Okay. Um, great. Then I leave the stage to you now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, hello. I will talk about uh, why I recommend to develop. API client library for developer and API vendors. I'll first introduce myself. Uh, hello, I'm Achi from Japan, and I'm CEO of MoonGift uh, Devrel Agency. I organize some of Devrel conference like DevRelCon Tokyo since 2017 and co-organizer of DevRelCon as 2020. And I will hold the Devrel Asia 2020 on November 14th. Please save the date and join it. And I have some social media accounts. Uh, I use same name on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub named Goofmint. Please follow me and ask me anything if you have any questions. So let's start my journey from my careers. I love programming so much. Uh, my first experience of programming is eight years old and it began be basic. It's so basic language. Uh, do you remember it? So I have to write so long code for game that I won't play it. But it was really fantastic experience for me. When I grew up to junior high school students, I began to programming for websites. I ran Java for Java applets and JavaScript for display or moving the text. When I was high school student, I ran some type of all type language. Cause I was mechanical engineering student, I have to run programming for curriculum. Um, I like Shilang, but uh, I don't like uh, Pascal or Fortran. And I become worker. I have to use several languages for job, PHP, Power, Java, Ruby, Ruby, and so on. Currently, I quit the company and I run my company. I quit to uh, develop client system. I'm making something new for myself. In that time, I'm using so many languages that I showed it. About 30 years ago, the programming language were few and there was no framework. But now we know there are a bunch of programming languages and frameworks exist. And developers live seen separately in each programming language and community areas. By the way, when I work for developer in 2015, I found out brand new word, DevRel. In 2015, some crowd vendors increased their awareness around the world, like AWS, GCP, and Azure. And iOS and Dev Android grew up very, very fast. I want to know why and what is the key. And I found the word Devrel. So I want to explain about Devrel in short time. This is quote from my website. Devrel is a marketing technique used to ensure that one company, products, and developers establish a good continuity relationship with external developers through mutual communication. For example, Apple has held annual developer conference named WWDC. They present uh, several new technologies and products in the conference. 
most of developers are charmed by Apple. Developers will decide to develop new app for App Store. Apple encouraged development new app for App Store. Apple, new, uh, Apple notes apps make new value of iOS product. And API vendors. The vendors want to API to be used by developers. Developers make something new services by APIs and make more better world by API. So many API vendors have started DevRel in the world. I jumped into DevRel world in 2015. I support several client services as evangelist. Most important task is increasing awareness of service. So I'm writing blog article, attend meetup as speakers, making deck of presentation and so on. As a result, I lost much programming time. It's very tragic instance for me. Cause most of people who involve developer relations have to catch up brand new technology every time, like deep learning, blockchains, container, and so on. But many evangelists or developer advocates lost programming time by their tasks. So some evangelists back to programmer after two or three years later. On the other hand, I want to talk about API vendor. I think there are some levels of API vendor. The first level is provides only API. Some developers try it, but most of developers don't want to try it because every time they have to use HTTP libraries to call that API. It's very bother. So second level, the vendor prepared few libraries for some programming language. For example, if the service is for mobile, they provide iOS and Android SDK. Or if they are gaming services, they support Unity and Unreal Engine. Those SDKs are platform SDKs that is vendor's target. Third level, the vendor prepares library for several programming languages. And sometimes they support some frameworks. Cloud vendor is very good example. They have to support several programming languages that run on the server, like Java, PHP, Ruby, Python, and Node.js. Lately, same case is happened in front-end framework. Some vendor support React, Vue, Angular, TypeScript, Flutter Web, like that. So front, but front end framework is changing so fast. So support of latest version is so tough for vendor. But I suggest the SDK is very important for developers. If developers get lost to choose from two services, they will select services that has SDK. The developers want to release from hard development, so they use API. But if API has no SDK, why they want to jump into way that need more development? So SDK is also important for me, like a developer relation team, we can't make good relationship with developers if they don't choose our services. So, but development environment is spreading so much. There are so many programming languages and frameworks. Vendor's budget is limited. So they have to choose good options. They will choose language or framework that Many developers use it and match with develop, uh, vendor's target. If it's 30 years ago, vendor will be de uh, de mm, de sorry, uh, developed CRAN SDK, and it's done. 
but now completely different and difficult. So I recommend Community Library or SDK. It's an official open source and it's not perfect, but it will be satisfied most of developers because it's developed by developer for developer. They developed the library for themselves. The library will be satisfied most of need. And it supports quickly version, uh, version app. In my case, first version can do just one thing, like save the data. And second version supports find data. And third version supports updates or delete. In offshore SDK, cannot do that, like gradually version app. So I share about example. First example is NifCloud mobile backend. It provides mobile backend as a, as a service. Simply, they provide cloud database, file storage, or management push, push notifications. Their main target is mobile app developers. So they provide several SDKs for iOS, Android, Unity, and JavaScript. JavaScript SDK can run with Node.js, but other SDKs run only their platform. Many developers needed SDKs that run on the server side. They have own server already, and they want to work together with NifCloud mobile backend. But they don't want to read API documents and develop with Low level code. So I've developed some SDKs for server side languages like Java, Ruby, PHP, and C. -sharp. Those SDKs support our developers. I'm opening my software as open source software on GitHub, and I'm updating my software by issues and needs from developers. I don't aim perfect SDK that covered every features. I developed suitable for developers. At first, I developed C -sharp SDK for Xamarin, but contributor updated it to support Windows and Mac OS. And he made script to create package for Nugget that is a, a library manager of Visual Studio or C Sharp. So I can deploy package to Nugget. The contributor has worked at Microsoft Japan and he is specialist of C Sharp. Normally, it doesn't happen. Sometimes NIFCloud and Microsoft become competitors in Japan. So if I make offshore SDKs, they never help me, but it's open source and an offshore ones, so help support me a lot. And another example, uh, customer mail cloud, it's uh, sending email provider based on Japan. <clears throat> they have only API, no providing offshore SDK. So I developed Python, Ruby, Node.js, and Google App Script SDK for using their API easy. Why do I choose those languages? Because many developers want to send email from cloud function as a services. Most of cloud vendor cross SMTP port for security. Customers, uh, customers mail cloud provides SMTP, but developers cannot use it from cloud function services. They have to call API, but they don't want to use HTTP protocol directly. So I made SDK for them. Developers can send email easily from AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions, and so on. And they can send bulk email from Google Seed by Google App Script SDK. The biggest competitor 
SendGrid provides SDK a lot, like Golang, C Sharp, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. And there are many, many community libraries. Okay, so in the next, I will share about the pros and cons about community libraries. Uh, first, I want to introduce pros for developers because I'm developed several libraries as developers. Usually when I develop the SDKs, I register it on package repository like NPM, PIP, and Ruby, Ruby gems. As a result, I can show my name on there as developers. It is very important to achieve for developer, I think. Second, we can talk with other developers with code. I already talked about my experience. Uh, some developers who worked at Microsoft helped me and he supported me to upload my code to package repository. That is just an example. If you will make any softwares and publish it as open source software, softwares, you can get awesome feedbacks from other developers. The third, I want to start. Uh, I want to stand developer side, but I don't have much time to develop something, so I can't touch new technology, new framework, or language. So when I when Flutter or Deno show up, I develop new SDKs using those languages or framework. It's very useful experience for me. I run how to write the code, what is the future of it. And last, I know some software that generates SDK from Swagger or Open API specification document. It's very good but it is not suitable or perfect for developers. When I use it, I feel something strange, like I use API directory and it doesn't fit programming language that I use. The programming has trend of style and programming language has different style in each other. Community library is not generated from document, it's handmade. So it is suitable for specific programming language or framework. On the other hand, what is the value for vendor? I already talked about, you can get advantage for competitors. There are many SDKs, it become meaning for selecting your product by developers. They use those SDKs with your services, the developers can easy to use your service. And if you provide only SDKs for mobile, you can reach out only mobile developers. But if there is for server side, you can also reach server side developers. Upside down, uh, what is bad for developers? Most of community libraries, quality is very low, lower than official libraries. They have cheap documents, there is a gap in tests, and perhaps uh, they may not provide the features that you want. And the continuous maintenance is very difficult program. The developers who made the SDK will get bored development or maintenance the library. So we can find out so many libraries that don't update five or more years old. And for vendor, I think vendor will get more value than loss, but there is some concern. At first, you will get questions from developers about unofficial SDKs. You have to reply every time. It's not official SDKs, so please ask your question on their repository. And second, copyright or brand problem. If developer uses your service name on their SDKs, it looks like offshore. And if the SDK has big bug 
or make trouble, your brand will get lost. So some vendor, for instance, using their services, service name in software. They want to control their brand and think to separate offshore and unofficial. So if you care about that, uh, like a brand control or uh, copyrights, you should write it on your developer website. Okay. So uh, summaries. I really suggest development SDK for API. If you are developers, your careers will be great by development SDKs. Please try to spread your name in the world. And vendor side, if you have development power a lot, you can develop every SDKs in your company. It's perfect, but I think it is not uh, realistic. So if you want to need community libraries, you, sh you should encourage your developers by developer relations. So uh, one more thing is I hold on the online conference named Debra Asia 2020. Main theme is developer relation, but there, is, there are so many uh, sessions of API and community. It's free conference, please attend it. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you, as you see. Um, maybe just a quick question for you. And uh, may I ask, what is the common challenge when you creating an API SDK library? Uh, do you, can you name a few, or, or do you have any experience, or, or just something you can share more? Oh, it's been. Uh, uh, what is good for me, or what is bad for me, right? Just yeah. my experience. Yeah, maybe, or would that be the difficulty? Will be huh? go to oh. the maintenance of the SDK mm -hmm. or, or, or the design or to tailor make rather than to generate yeah. it automatically? Can you, mm -hmm. is there any common uh, consideration or yeah. challenge you can share with us? I see. So uh, when I, uh, developed to the dot uh, SDKs, so dot uh, completely changing their uh, coding standard with uh, version one and version two. Mm. So I have to uh, remake everything. Yeah. So it's very tough. And but the developers uh, who use my SDKs uh, don't want to change own code. So yeah. I have to uh, mix the uh, SDKs uh, and uh, I have to equate the API uh, interface. So yeah. it's very tough for me, yeah. So it's really go to the maintenance effort in order to make sure it is better compatible and so on. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. And